Hi, I'm Daniel, and this is my second game made in Unity, The Castle of a Thousand Worlds, which I made for Game Content Production 2 with Nick Heitzman. I used a prefab of Falling Leaves particle effect to go over the menu and give a nice seamless transition, uh, which will go into the narrative, which you can press X to skip, or you can continue watching. The art in the background, I got permission from an artist to use in my game in exchange for sending him the link. As you can see, the game is a lot more fleshed out than my previous game, including tutorials that are built in so they don't have to stop the, the action. Now here is a monster. Uh, you can either use enter or the left mouse button to attack. And I have behavior. Uh, for you to only be able to attack a certain amount of time. If the time runs out, he goes back to his state and the combo ends. You can also block, which is imp essential to progressing in the world. For this ogre, he did not have a death animation, and so I used Photoshop to craft a poof uh, animation that would make it seem as though he were destroyed. Now this pillar here represents a checkpoint, and it will light in flame once it's activated. You can also dodge roll, which ignores the uh, enemies and adds momentum to the player, which is affected by how fast you are moving. It is a good way to, to avoid encounters that you do not wish to fight. Money is also important, as which will be discovered later, uh, with the built-in shop. I also included a parry mechanic that allows you to parry uh, if you press the control key at just the right time. However, if I'm holding, the object will just break on the shield. Parrying does not expend any stamina, making it essential. As you can see, I have also included a death animation for the player, which will play upon his health reaching zero. You may notice many different types of enemies. They all run under the same script, determining whether they are projectile enemy or melee enemy will determine which animations will play and what happens. However, they all run the same script and they function the same. I also messed around with lighting in this game. As you can see, uh, the lights pro provide a haunting effect, uh, making it mysterious, magical-looking castle. So as you can see, I don't have the key for this door, and I must continue to look for it. Now these elevators are different than other ele elevators in the game because they only activate once the player steps on them. 
and they will not reactivate afterwards. These elevators, however, are on a patrol path going from point A to point B constantly. Now I have the key, and there is an elevator to take you back up. Again, only activating once the player has stepped on it. I also edit an existing sprite sheet to include uh, various keyframes that would make the door animation look a lot smoother. That is unlocked, and I can continue. This is the Goblin Shopkeeper. His purpose is to deliver exposition to the player uh, between levels and also offer upgrades. He is a more civilized version of the goblins found in the, in the castle and chooses rather to engage in capitalism rather than blind violence. So with my money I can buy some extra hearts and some stamina and continue on to the boss level. As you can see, I have four hearts now at the top. Now, I wasn't able to implement the boss level as I had reached the end of my final build uh, at the end of the semester and needed to submit. However, I plan on continuing work on this game in the future. Thank you for watching. Now let's look at some of our scripts. First, we have the elevator script, which is a variation of Nick Heitzman's elevator script, uh, with one key difference. It, it defines the player, and it sets a player trigger to true or false to determine depending on whether the, tr the player is on the elevator or not. If the player is on the elevator, it'll move to point A, to point B, from point A. Uh, and once it gets to point B, it will stay there. Next, we have the shoot at player in range script, which simply uses ray casting to determine if the player is within range of a projectile enemy. If so, they will begin firing their projectiles. This is the enemy projectile script and is very important in blocking uh, as well as parrying. Basically, uh, if, if the object is parried, uh, then the projectile will shoot back and it is determined by an on-trigger enter script, or on-trigger stage script, uh, where if the collision tag is parry, uh, that means that parry will be true. And if parry is true, the object will be reflected back at the enemy. Next is the wall jump, which also uses ray casting to find the layer of the walls. Uh, that way you can only wall jump on, on the walls that should have that functionality and not all walls. Uh, once it, the ray cast determines that you are pressing one of the horizontal keys and, and the ray cast is not null, uh, then you will begin wall sliding. From wall sliding, you can wall jump, which will just add force. Finally, the enemy follow script. This is an advanced version of the enemy, enemy follow script from my game Hellmouth. Uh, however, this one is not accounting for hiding. So once the player is within the distance that the enemy can come at after him, the enemy will start to approach and then attack. And that is Castle of a Thousand Worlds. Thank you for watching.